Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In this session, let's learn very basic concepts about microcytic hypochromic anemia. So in the next few minutes, we will uh, see what microcytic hypochromic anemia is. We will look into various causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia and a bit about mechanism of microcytic hypochromic anemia in these causes. And a note on morphology and finally we will end this uh, session with understanding some basic approach towards diagnosis once you see microcytic hypochromic anemia on a peripheral smear so in the previous video we tried to understand you know what are normocytes what are microcytes and what are macrocytes right and that's based on the relationship between the size of the nucleus of small lymphocyte and the rbcs and that's how we uh, derived at normocytes microcytes and macrocytes and similarly and similarly these anemias are referred to as normocytic normochromic anemia when you know when all the rbcs are approximately around the size of the small lymphocyte and if the size of the RBCs are lesser than that of the nucleus of small lymphocyte, then they are called microcytic hypochromic anemia. And if they are larger, it's called macrocytic anemia, right? So in this session, let's learn about microcytic hypochromic anemia. So what is this microcytic hypochromic anemia? So it's just a type of anemia which is characterized by, you know, the red blood cells which are of decreased size. And that's why they are called microcyte. And also they have reduced hemoglobin content and that's how they are referred to as hypochromic. So, these are microcytic hypochromic anemias. Now, let's look into various causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia, right? So, remember some of the most important causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia. I have just tried to, you know, uh, help you guys understand by this simple mnemonic called I teach anemic little children becoming scholars just remember this statement so let's learn what are the different uh, causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia so i for iron deficiency anemia e for thalassemia a for anemia of chronic disease l for lead poisoning c is for copper deficiency b is for b6 deficiency and s for sideroblastic anemia so of these the first three that is iron deficiency anemia the thalassemia and Anemia of chronic disease are the most common causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia. So, let's also look into the mechanism of each one of these causes. Remember, I'm not going into detail about each of these causes. I'll just try to tell you basic mechanism involved in each of these causes. So, what happens in iron deficiency anemia is there is inadequate iron supply and that hampers hemoglobin production leading to microcytic hypochromic red blood cells. Thalassemia, I have discussed in detail about various types of thalassemias in my earlier videos. You can have a look at those videos. So, what happens in thalassemia? Basically, there is genetic mutation which disrupt the globin chain synthesis thereby reducing hemoglobin production and that's the reason for microcytosis in various thalassemias. So, what happens in anemia of chronic disease? If you recollect in my earlier video, I have talked about anemia of chronic disease as one of the most common cause of normocytic normochromic anemia. It also results in microcytic hypochromic anemia. The reason behind that is the inflammatory signals, you know, they hinder the availability of iron for red cell formation. So, which leads to microcytic anemias. So, what happens in lead poisoning? The lead as a metal, you know, it inhibits enzymes which are critical for hemoglobin synthesis leading to impaired red blood cell production and microcytic hypochromic anemias. So, let us see what really happens in copper deficiency. Copper plays a major role in metabolism. One of the important enzymes which requires copper is ceruloplasmin. So, what happens when there is decreased copper is the function of ceruloplasmin is compromised. And because of that, the iron release is decreased. Availability of iron for hemoglobin formation is also reduced. Okay, And that leads to production of inadequate hemoglobin leading to micro cytosis so the next important deficiency you, which you need to know is b6 deficiency so we should know that vitamin b6 is essential for proper heme synthesis so in what stage basically vitamin b6 acts as a cofactor for the enzyme amino levulinic acid synthase and that is a first and the rate limiting step in heme synthesis pathway so whenever you have a b6 deficiency 
it results in reduced heme synthesis thereby affecting erythropoiesis and finally microcytosis so at this point let me tell you vitamin b12 deficiency results in macrocytic anemias whereas b6 deficiency results in microcytic anemias and the last important type of anemia is the sideroblastic anemia where there is disruption of heme synthesis again and that's because of various acquired or genetic causes so i'll be dealing with sideroblastic anemia in another video in detail right as of now just remember that there is disruption of heme synthesis which leads to accumulation of iron in the precursor cells that's erythroid precursor cells or erythroblasts and that's the cause for ineffective erythropoiesis in sideroblastic anemia leading to microcytic anemia so these are the various mechanisms involved in each of these causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia so what is the morphology as i said all the cells most of the cells are smaller in size as well as the chromia you know the amount of hemoglobin in each of these cells is reduced and that's why they are microcytic and hypochromic of course you can see variable amount of anisopoikilocytosis which means variation in size and shape of the rbcs so this is a peripheral smear where you can easily make out that there is variation in size and shape but predominantly most of these cells are smaller than the lymphocyte here right and of course there are few larger cells but then predominant cells are the smaller cells that's why it's predominantly microcytic and you can see the amount of hemoglobin in each rbc is reduce significantly reduce the pallor the central pallor which was supposed to be less than or equal to around one third of the diameter in these cases in this particular illustration you can see that the central pallor is more than the normal uh, so this is a peripheral smear you know uh, illustration of microcytic hypochromic anemia so let's look into the approach towards microcytic hypochromic anemia whenever a pathologist whenever you come across a case of microcytic hypochromic red blood cells or microcytic hypochromic anemia in your peripheral smear the first thing the clinician asks the patient is to get serum iron profile done the serum iron profile basically includes serum iron estimation serum ferritin estimation which is a storage form of iron and then you have serum transfer in levels as well as total iron binding capacity the tibc stands for total iron binding capacity so based on the results what we get we can have different scenarios let us look into each one of them first one is when the serum iron levels are decreased serum ferritin is also decreased so what does that say that says your uh, serum iron level is also reduced as well as the storage of serum iron level is significantly reduced and you have total iron binding capacity e which is increased so this straightforward says that you are dealing with the case of iron deficiency anemia so the second scenario is where serum iron levels are decreased but serum ferritin levels it can be normal or sometimes increased and there is decreased total iron binding capacity so when you come across this this is seen in anemia of chronic disease moving on to another scenario where serum iron as well as serum ferritin both are increased okay and then the total iron binding capacity is normal and if you carefully observe the peripheral smear you find that there is dimorphic blood picture that means you, you can find two different populations of red cell red blood cells so what does the dimorphism means you find two different populations of red blood cells and one of them is microcytic hypochromic rbcs so this is what you see in sideroblastic anemia you can consider that this could be sideroblastic anemia based on the peripheral smear the serum iron studies but then you have to confirm by performing a bone marrow examination where you should demonstrate the ringed sideroblast we talked about mechanism right there is accumulation of iron within the erythroid precursor cells and they are seen as ringed sideroblast when you do a perform a special stains for iron so next scenario is iron levels serum ferritin levels both are increased whereas total iron binding capacity is decreased then you should think of course you go back and see the peripheral smear again if you find more of basophilic stippling of rbcs that gives you a towards clue of lead poisoning okay so this is how you know clinician approach the diagnosis of lead poisoning of course you will be having a proper clinical history as well now the next one is all the parameters are normal the iron the ferritin and the total iron binding capacity is normal then you should think of performing hemoglobin electrophoresis if it is abnormal then it has to be 
thalassemia right so i have discussed in detail about all the types of thalassemia in my previous videos just go and have a look in those videos and if the hemoglobin electrophoresis is also normal then you probably should think of some other causes maybe you can you know estimate serum copper uh, levels look for copper deficiency and that's how there is eval that's how we evaluate case of microcytic hypochromic anemia right so remember that this is this is not an exhaustive list what i have described now the approach is basically based on just one investigation that is serum iron profile levels okay so there are some uncommon causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia which i have not touched upon so as of now, you just remember that there are few important causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia of which iron deficiency anemia, thalassemia and anemia of chronic disease are the most common ones. Of course, you have lead poisoning, B6 deficiency as well as copper deficiency and finally, sideroblastic anemia, right? So we also looked into the mechanism and then the approach towards diagnosis of microcytic hypochromic anemia, right? So that's all for today's session. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any questions to ask. Don't forget to subscribe because I'll be coming out with many more such interesting topics for pathology students. And do share if you find this video useful. Thank you.